Hi everybody. Uh, last video I posted about the carnivore diet. Uh, there were some questions around that, so I had a little Q&A there. And uh, there's a couple more questions that came out, so I thought I'd talk a little bit more about the carnivore diet. We'll make it a carnivore diet little stint here, at least two, two videos in a row. We'll see if we do a third, depending on the questions that come in. Um, as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So the, there are a few questions here. So one is, what happens to the microbiome or to components of the microbiome that need fiber to survive. So of course, if one's eating a full carnivore diet, not a meat-based diet, but a full carnivore diet, there's really negligible amounts of fiber on, on that diet. And indeed, certain microorganisms, certain probiotics, they need fiber to survive. Um, <clears throat> to my understanding from, and this is largely from a podcast that I've listened to, and I think it's in his book as well, um, Dr. Uh, Paul Saladino, he's a medical doctor, um, his handle on, um, in, um, on Instagram is carnivoremd. Um, um, he was, to my understanding, strict carnivore for quite a while and then gradually phased some non-carnivorous foods into his diet and then still follows a meat-based diet, to my understanding. Really great podcast, really great book, um, really smart guy. I really love listening to his material and interviews lots of people and has debates with vegans and this and that and just kind of, I, I think he's a wealth of information. So anyways, based on uh, what he's reported from testing his own microbiome and apparently there have been studies done, I've not looked into these studies, too many studies to look into, too little time, but according to him who has looked into these studies, um, they have... Uh, Researchers have looked at the microbiomes of uh, folks who are part of um, indigenous cultures where they eat a primarily meat-based diet, um, and they're comparing that to the microbiome of you know folks who are not eating meat-based diets. And um, I also believe, if memory serves, that they've looked at in, um, within the same individual like what their microbiome looks like eating a meat meat heavier diet uh, versus a meat lighter diet. And to my understanding, the <clears throat> certain species definitely change a whole like the, the uh, of different species really changes a lot depending on the diet, which makes a lot of sense. As the question states, you know, like what about microbes that need fiber to survive? Well, in a lower fiber, um, in the presence of a lower fiber diet, um, yeah, a lot of those microbes are going to die off um, or at least be in much, much lower numbers and then certain other species are going to grow more. So the million dollar question is, well, what's the perfect microbiome to have? What's the healthiest microbiome to have? Um, we know from different studies that certain strains of probiotics certainly confer different health benefits to us, but what's the perfect blend? And to my understanding, that question has not been definitively answered. Um, it's a huge question. There are so many species of different microbes, so many you know, trillions of them living in the gut. Um, so I, I don't think that answer is known. So until that answer is known, if it ever is going to be known, <clears throat> then my thought is, well, how does a patient feel? Um, like how's their gut health? How are their energy levels? How's their skin health? Like all these different, uh, how are their joints feeling? Like all these different uh, clinical clinical factors or features that give us insight into how the, um, the gut is doing or the, all these clinical uh, uh, physiological factors that are impacted by the gut health. If a person's feeling really good eating a certain way and feeling less well eating another way, sure, maybe it's due to microbiome shifts, maybe it's for other reasons, but I feel like the proof is in the pudding that if a person's feeling well eating a certain way, it's probably a pretty good diet for them. Um, obviously, there could be nuances and exceptions to that, and one could get into microbiome testing, looking at different levels of things, looking at inflammatory markers in the gut, etc. But um, just from a bird's eye view, clinically, feeling good eating a certain way, maybe that diet's a good fit. As I said in other videos, I've had some patients who do very well on a carnivore diet or a meat-based diet, and some patients who feel awful on it. And um, there's, again, a number of reasons why that might be, but I don't think it's a you know, one-size-fits-all diet for everyone. Um, it kind of ties into another question here that was, uh, that was uh, three questions. Uh, so one is, have I tested my microbiome to see if it's still there? And I think I, think I see that's a winky face there. Um, so I have not personally tested my microbiome um, after having... I've been on the carnivore diet. I, I have, well, it's not entirely true. Um, I did uh, uh, SIBO testing um, pre and post diet and um, just post um, carnivore diet, like there's just no traces of any small intestine bacterial gas at all um, in my intestinal tract, which makes sense because when folks go on a meat-based diet, their intestinal gas production goes pretty much down to zero um, in most cases. Um, so that, that made sense, but I haven't done any um, probiotic um, you know, or, um, microbial diversity tests or anything like that in myself. But uh, again, per what I've uh, learned from listening to Dr. Saladino, the carnivore MD, um, my understanding, as I said earlier, if there can be notable differences in gut microbiomes, but even in folks who are eating a meat-based diet, um, they do still have um, a microbiome. It's just, it's just different than when they're eating um, fiber. And then the final question here is what about antioxidants and vitamins? Um, so <clears throat> I, I assume that the uh, subtext there is um, where 
uh, certain probiotic species make certain vitamins for us, make certain other compounds for us, and so are we you know, losing it on those? It's a great question. And again, I just, until we have a definitive answer, if one is ever going to be forthcoming from the research literature, I think we just have to put on our you know, bird's eye view thinking caps and say, well, if a person's feeling good, they're not manifesting symptoms of you know, B12 deficiency or vitamin K deficiency or things like that, then we probably don't really have to worry a whole lot about like, oh no, my microbiome's not producing enough of these substances that are that are made in the gut. Um, so good questions, and I don't think there's definitive answers to any of them, but those are my best answers, and um, I appreciate the question. So I hope that information was useful. If anybody has any questions about this topic or anything else, just post in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer as soon as I can.